हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर पूजा जौहरी योर बाई केमिस्ट्री एजुकेटर सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड्स एज पर देयर कार्बन स्केलेटन सो वी विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन सम नॉन असेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड्स एंड सम असेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड्स सो इट इज़ गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो सो लेट्स स्टार्ट अप विद द डिस्कशन Amino acids. We all are familiar with this that they are having a zwitterion structure. They are amphoteric substances. They can behave as an acid. They can behave as bases. There are twenty standard amino acids. And if we look at the structure of all the twenty standard amino acids, there is one common thing in them, except our group, and that is why they have a metabolism as per carbon skeleton, as per their nitrogen skeleton. So, as per carbon skeleton. it is very interesting to note that there are some non essential amino acids also which plays a very very important role a very important non essential amino acid is glycine even though it is non essential non essential are the ones which cannot be which can easily be synthesized in the body they don't have to be provided from outside diet okay that is why it is non essential and the interesting part is it is optically inactive also it does not have a chiral carbon atom and it is the simplest amino acid but still it is considered to be a very important one and if you look at the carbon skeleton it is strictly strictly a glucogenic amino acid Now, why it is considered to be a very important amino acid? Non-essential, hai, so you can say that glycine and serine. The enzyme is hydroxyl methyl transferase. Because if you put hydroxyl and methyl group in glycine, it will be converted into serine. If you take out serine, will be converted into glycine, and the name of the enzyme is glycine synthase. Now the question arises: What are the important products synthesized by glycine? So we can say the specialized products because this is the question which has been asked in the exam. Products synthesized by glycine. The first one is in heme synthesis. If we look at the synthesis of heme, the first important reaction in which glycine combines with succinyl coenzyme a it forms a very very important intermediate amino levulinic acid in the presence of ala synthase this is the rate limiting enzyme so you can very well imagine the importance of glycine how important it is because this ala will be then forming heme in the end second important point about glycine is that it is required yeah it gives c4 c5 and n7 of purine nucleus major chunk of purine because if you look at the structure of purines this is synthesized by de novo pathway you know that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 and 9 this carbon this carbon and this nitrogen major chunk is coming from glycine so you can imagine again the importance third important feature is glycine when it combines with cysteine and glutam and glutamate gcg it forms glutathione glutathione which is a very very important antioxidant so you can say glycine plays a very important role in the synthesis of glutathione second important thing is this glycine when it combines with you can say first of all arginine and then methionine what it forms the mnemonic is 
jam not g uh, not jam it's gam it forms creatine creatine which is the energy reservoir of the muscles so you can imagine the importance of glycine that required for the synthesis of glutathione creatine required for the synthesis of c4 c5 and 7 of purine nucleus and required for the synthesis of heme and glycine itself is a glucogenic amino acid but it is non essential okay then moving on to the second amino acid will take up first of all branch chain amino acids bcaa branched chain amino acids again the mnemonic to remember branch chain amino acids is liv l i v l stands for leucine I stands for isoleucine and V stands for valine. Leucine is a potent ketogenic amino acid. Isoleucine is both and valine is glucogenic. Right, now these are the important branch chain amino acids. If you look at the metabolism also there are two similar reactions. Two similar reactions means transamination right leading to dehydrogenation genation and leading to decarboxylation. After undergoing these three important reactions, leucine, isoleucine and valine, their fate is determined. As I told you, ketogenic, isoleucine is both gluco as well as ketogenic and valine is strictly a glucogenic amino acid. Then coming over to the inborn error of metabolism, the most important inborn error of metabolism of BCAA are MSUD which stands for maple syrup urine disease. The deficient enzyme in MSUD is decarboxylase or dehydrogenase. And what is the clinical feature? Urine gives the smell of burnt sugar. Right. So, this is MSUD and second inborn error associated with this is isovaleric acidemia. These are the MSUD and isovaleric acidemia. These are the two inborn errors associated with the metabolism of branch chain amino acids. In ISO, it is also known as sweaty feet odor syndrome. Feet odor syndrome. The Urine gives the smell of that urine and the feet also starts giving the smell of that sweat. So these are the two inborn error of metabolism associated with BCAA or branch chain amino acids. Then the metabolism of the basic amino acids. Now if we talk about the basic amino acids, Arginine, histidine and lysine is also there. But arginine and histidine are semi-essential also because they are required in growing children and lactating mothers. Now if you look at first of all arginine, the only point which you have to remember in metabolism of arginine is 
that this arginine is required for the synthesis of citrulline in the presence of N nitric oxide synthase complex and it produces nitric oxide. What is the use of this nitric oxide? It acts as a vasodilator and it helps in, it basically it is relaxing, helps in relaxation of the smooth muscles. And it is also known as endothelium derived release factor. Very, very important. And a very important endothelium derived release factor. And it stays in the body for up to 5 seconds only. And after that it is it goes off and this is the only reaction in which nitric oxide is synthesized nitric oxide synthase complex this is arginine then next is histidine histidine is a very important semi essential amino acid in a sense that it is a very stable amino acid at physiological pH and if we look at the metabolism of histidine obviously the most important product synthesized by histidine is histamine which is secreted by the mast cells of the liver by decarboxylation it is a biogenic amine right and second is this histidine what is the other metabolism of histidine? This histidine forms urocanic acid. This urocanic acid forms an intermediate propionate for imidazolone, imidazolone propionate. And this here the enzyme is urocanase. Okay, and this is converted into FIGLU, which stands for formiminoglutamate. And this FIGLU in the presence of B9 forms glutamate. Now, what is the significance of this absence of B9? leads to accumulation of FIGLO in urine. So we can say that excretion of FIGLO in urine indicates B9 deficiency. So this is what is the metabolism of histidine. What you have to remember in this is histidine forms histamine and then histidine once its function is over it is degraded to form FIGLU which finally forms glutamate and glutamate can give rise to alpha ketoglutarate and you can say it is glucogenic also. Right. So in this video we have covered the metabolism of non-essential and essential amino acids. So I hope this is also clear to all of you. Thank you so much.